can you turn on your camera or are you not using your camera? I can. <gasps> yeah! Hi. <laughs> oh, oh, we're so happy to see you. Yay! Sorry about Hi, this. That's okay. I was like, I was sitting there and I was waiting and then I was like, wait, what time is it there? And I, I Googled it and I was wrong. We had a really uh, intense In depth conversation yeah. about balls. Uh, uh, yeah, a sponsorship. Oh, that reached out to us. They might've reached out to you as well. And I can't remember what it's, it's like called. Smooth My Balls or Smooth something. My Balls, yeah. Which we thought it was really okay. interesting that they even sent it to us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a pretty profound conversation that we had. I would, I would hope that, that men doing podcasts do like period underwear and stuff like that. <laughs> you Wouldn't know? That fantastic. The vaginal cup. Yeah. I know. I yeah. Mean, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. I would love to hear what a guy would have to say Same. about yeah, it. Yeah, the other thing too is that the, I don't think they'd want me trying to sell their smooth ball. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we literally products. made fun of balls for like yeah. two minutes. I we were like, let's let's see if they like this sample. <laughs> right. And the reality is it's like there's nothing you could really no. do to those things to make them look good. They're, no, they're terrible. They're <laughs> terrible. Like even if you like dip them in gold or something, they yeah. would not be attractive. Or chocolate. No. Right. No. Like, no, no, no. no. Nobody wants any part of that. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> I felt that. So sorry. I felt that. Daisy Egan. <laughs> Hi. Tony Award winner, writer, yeah. now podcaster from the Strange and Unexplained podcast. Thank you so much. We've been hitting you up since week one, right. since you got started, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. At first I was like, I don't know any story. I don't know any enough haunted stories yet, which is why I was like hesitant. But I know, you know, I, I know a little bit. And also yeah. I love your podcast. So. Oh my gosh, oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. yeah, that's awesome. Well, as I think Rebecca and I both, it's clear through us, you don't have to really know anything no. to start a podcast because uh -uh. we didn't mm -hmm. know, we just knew we liked ghost stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. So That's um, literally the only reason why we do this is because we like ghost stories. <laughs> yeah. And then we got started so and great. we had these moments where we'd be talking about something where we'd be like, oh my God, have you seen orbs? Yeah. They're like picking up <laughs> orbs on people's ring doorbells. And then you realize like, oh shit, people have been talking about this mm -hmm. forever now. Yeah. What made you start this podcast? Well, it was actually Patrick Pine's idea. Patrick and I have been friends for 10 years, I guess. And I kept bugging him, like, I want to do a podcast about this. I want to do a podcast about that. And he'd be like, no, those are all bad ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I love that honesty. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, like summer of last year, he was like, hey, I have a podcast idea. And he pitched it. He was like, you would tell just weird stories about UFOs and Bigfoot mm -hmm. and ghosts. And I was like, huh. That's interesting. Like I'm not, I wouldn't be the first person I would pick to do something like that because I am so skeptical. And so it sort of morphed into like, here's the story and here's why I think it's nonsense or not. And what I am learning is that as skeptical as I am about things, basically whenever I really do research, I'm like, wait, maybe this is real. It seems to open more questions than answers when you really start kind of digging into it. Your approach is really cool though, because yeah. I love how the, your podcasts, they're kind of like ours. They're pretty tight. They're concise. And there are some podcasts that I'll listen to. It's like, oh, so they spent four hours on something, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And Sometimes I'm in the mood for that, but like sometimes I just need you to, I just need somebody to tell me a story so I can forget that yeah. I'm exercising. Right. That's exactly it. Of right. course. Yeah. I will tell you with the watcher, I need an answer. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. And, and of course people have emailed in to say what their theories are. A lot of people thought it was the family who the Broadus is, but that doesn't make any sense no, because. You know what I think? Oh, oh, here we I go. I have a theory. Cause okay. I. I think whoever bought it the second time around for like the low, low price of $950 million was oh. setting this up from the penny. It was them. That's a brilliant idea. I'm going to pull that wow. shit. Wow. I yeah. hadn't even thought of that. That's a really good point. Like that, they got pissed that they were outbid. Yeah. Although again, the house wasn't even on the mark. Like they hadn't even advertised that it was for sale. I thought it was the family behind the house because yeah. it said, because that letter said, look behind you. Right. But apparently that family just moved out of their house. And then somebody else said, what if, what if it's somebody actually living in the walls? And that hadn't occurred to me Ooh. either. Oh, I know. I like that one too. And you should do an episode on people in walls, like yes. all those times or, or the weird little room in the closet yes. that you don't did know you, about. Did you see that woman on Instagram was yeah. like, look at this weird, it's like cold right here what? in my apartment in New York. Yes, in New York. Yes. Oh my God. I sent that to Patrick right away. I was like, we're doing this. And he's like, I don't, is that really a story? And I was 
was like, are you kidding me? Yes. A whole other room. And in yeah. New York, that's a so whole crazy. other apartment. Yes. Well, and that's just the beginning. In fact, on Facebook, there's a page called Things Found in Walls. And go check that. Uh. Out because, yeah, it's all, <laughs> it's actually a lot. It's more wholesome than it sounds because yeah. it's like, you know, love letters from a hundred right. years ago or what. And that's all sweet and wonderful. Right. right. But also- we found, we found something like that in our house in Brooklyn, which my parents just sold after 40 years. In the attic, they found a, like a cigar box under one of the floorboards and it had just like pictures and letters. I love that kind of thing. I love going to um, antique stores and going through the photographs. I opened a, a beautiful secretary desk at an antique store and I found this journal from the 1940s and the guy he had like a whole stack of them that just came with the desk you know it's in this tiny perfect cursive and she had like she would have spells spells my journal from when I lived in Albuquerque New Mexico when I was still a single girl I took it to a gas station and threw it away in the dumpster in the gas (gasps) because I was like one of these days I'm going to have kids and they will <laughs> dig through my stuff and they're going to find this and read all the demented uh, shit that I wrote for years and years. And, and my, mine was mainly, I hate my mom. <laughs> yeah. No, mine was like in my twenties. It was oh, some God. good, there was some juicy <laughs> stuff in there. And I, because I was also moving in with my husband. I'm like, I don't want him reading it no, either. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> like, I kept diaries from like age 12 to about 18 and those were just like the most angsty years like oh, you know yeah of my parents don't understand me and- back to podcasts like what yeah. inspired you what podcast were you listening to that made you start you know what's so funny i will kick myself into eternity for this in 2004 I got a, a new a brand new dell and that was back when they you know they were like those towers mm-hmm. yeah And it came with a microphone. It was one of those like, you know, crappy plastic microphones and some sort of, I think, rudimentary software. And I remember thinking, what if I sat down once a week and just sort of like chatted about life into this microphone and like put it somewhere on the internet? Which means I invented the podcast in 2004. <laughs> you did. Bravo. <laughs> yes. Claim it, Claim it Daisy. <laughs> it's yours. But just with everything, as with most other things in my life, I didn't act on it. Or I was like, that seems complicated. I'll just play video games instead. Um, I love storytelling. I love podcasts. I love that I can sit on the laundromat and listen. I love that I can be on the, you know, when I lived in New York, it was like all the time on the subway. I'd listen to my dad wrote a porno on the subway and just like laugh like a maniac. I would listen to a lot of true crime. I had to give that up during the pandemic just because I was, I was already right so freaked out and stressed out. And frankly, with my son home 24 seven, I, I wasn't really listening to podcasts at all for a while, but I really loved uh, You're Wrong About. Have you guys listened to that? No. Uh-uh. So. It's a podcast with these two millennials who like go back and look at big moments in our sort of pop history, like Tanya Harding or the Exxon Valdez oil spill or like the Anita Hill hearings. And they'll sort of talk about like what we got wrong about it. Plus, you know, I've been an actor for 30 years and I'm tired. Like I'm, I'm a woman of a certain age now in Hollywood and I don't want to have to worry about my weight anymore. And like, you know, I can be in my pajamas and I can be wearing an acne mask and I can do my (laughs) podcast. It's terrific. Yep. And it was like the perfect job to start during the pandemic because I wasn't going anywhere anyway. And people are listening too. Right, absolutely. Right. Yeah. yeah, in fact, we're seeing a slump right now because people are getting out of their houses. Right, so like, and everybody's like, bye podcast. Yeah, bye. I guess that when you started doing this podcast, you weren't necessarily into the, all the paranormal and stuff like that, but I'm guessing now you probably are more so. So what kind of like rabbit holes do you fall down? Well, it's funny because... I would consider myself agnostic about ghosts. Mm -hmm. I used to say, no, I don't believe in them at all. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, it's hard, it's hard to deny. And what I'll try to do is like find any way to debunk it. It's weird though, when whole families are having visions and have you guys read uh, Jenny Slate's book, Little Weirds? No, oh, no, but I want to so I love bad. her. It's a great book. I loved it so much, but she talks about the house she grew up in in Massachusetts and that it was haunted and that her parents still live there and that the whole family was like, oh yeah, there's there's the ghost. Like it was just a matter of da- like, daily what? life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. any, anytime you talk to somebody who's like lived in that yeah. experience where it's repeated and very real, like um, 
Brittany Howard from the Alabama Shakes. Same uh-huh. thing, house that she was living in when they were recording their first album, right? Or whatever they're called now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The albums are still cool. right. But the young kids still like albums. That's their right. first record, or yeah, vinyl's making a comeback. It but is same so thing. good. Like repeated experiences, and it is. It's like it's hard to look at them and be like, no, something else was happening with right. you. And for that long period of a time. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I grew up in this house in Brooklyn mm-hmm. and the house was like decrepit and falling down until my stepmother moved in in like 96 and was like, I'm fixing this. But I feel like if any house should have been haunted, it should have been that one. My bedroom was directly under the attic. And so I feel like, you know, I never heard footsteps and I'm, bummed about it but I also wonder if sometimes ghosts are like picky about who they haunt you know they're like this one it's gonna be too much work well it does Um, seem like in our experience it happens more often to certain people for sure. And uh, it does seem like some people have that gene or whatever it's in their DNA where they sense it feel it see it whatever and other people just don't yeah, so I think it it might be like being able to curl your tongue or something. Maybe <laughs> maybe it's just something that it's an ability or Possibly. something. That would make sense too, because I think my family was generally very pragmatic, like the generations, you know. Right. So, have you ever had any sort of paranormal experience? Maybe not ghosts, but anything else that was unexplained. I mean, I I have suffered from sleep paralysis, and I haven't had it in a long time. Knock wood. I will it's, knock for you too. It's so awful. In high school, I used to get to school really early so that I could go sleep in the library. Like, I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> Teenager things do. Yeah, it really is. Stay asleep at home. But every time I did that, I would have these very uncomfortable, very visceral dreams, I think that a classmate of mine, uh, this guy, Jason, specifically this guy would come in and be like, class is starting. And I couldn't open my eyes. And I'd be trying to like pry my eyes open with my fingers or like trying to move my arms. But that didn't, that wasn't happening. Because when I later said to him, like, you got me up for school, he'd be like, what are you talking about? And I wasn't in the library. It just felt very real. And then I've also, over the years with the sleep paralysis, have not directly seen something, but like felt that I was in serious, serious danger. Mm -hmm. And I can't move. I'm literally paralyzed. And I think the last time it happened, I somehow willed myself to yell out. Because the other thing with the sleep paralysis is I would try to yell and nothing would come out. I couldn't open my mouth. No sound would come out, whatever it is. I'm sure there's some scientific explanation. Yeah. There's something about, there's a chemical in your body when you're deeply asleep that your brain is secreting it. So it keeps you from being able to physically act out. So you're not acting out your dreams. Mm -hmm. But then there's, there's another level to it. That's odd to me. And, uh, and it's funny though, cause like I've had that thing where I'm trying to talk I'm trying to, you know, yeah, and then it's you're, awful. You're, yeah. the person next to you is like, stop it. You right. sound yeah. horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've had, of course, the, the shadow people. Spiders. Spiders. That's a big one that we've had lately that I've had that happen countless times. Yeah. And uh, where you are, you think you're awake, but you're not awake. And there's spiders on your bed or they're on the ceiling and they're falling oh. on you. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> no, and that this, sounds awful. But we mentioned it and well somebody wrote us an email about it and they she called them twilight spiders and i said that i've had the same thing i mean i want to say for 20 years now that i've had these things and then all these people started writing in men and women saying oh my gosh yeah yeah, i see the twilight spiders too in fact we're gonna say we want you to do an episode (laughs) on on (laughs) yeah absolutely my partner said that for a long time he would see a disembodied hand <gasps> crawling up his, oh, his stories like that I love, I love those and he said one day he he finally like in the middle of the night he saw it and he said something like i see you or it's okay and the thing never came back really then he also has a great ghost story about camping in Joshua Tree in like the 90s. And he was by himself in his tent and he heard footsteps in the middle of the night coming toward his tent. He sat up and he was like, is somebody out there? And the footsteps stopped. Mm. And then they started again and they got closer and closer. And he was completely naked. <laughs> and he like throws his hiking boots on and grabs his knife. <laughs> I love it. And boots and a knife and 
know. Naked. And naked. Just wheeling just, things around. Yeah. His, his un, ungroomed balls just swimming in the wind. <laughs> And I was thinking that. I was thinking that. I literally Thank was you. thinking that. Swinging his knife. And he said the footsteps were close enough that, that whoever it was, he would have been right there. Yeah. And nobody was there. And the next day, he's, go, he's leaving Joshua Tree, stops at the gas station, and he, he sees a missing persons poster. Mm. And it, it was like missing in Joshua Tree National Park. And Kurt said to the guy, I I think I might have heard that guy last night. I think he may be out there. And, and the guy was like, oh, I should take that sign down. He died a week ago. <gasps> oh. And apparent, apparently the guy had died like very close to where Kurt was camping. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Yeah. Also, so, why don't camp. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> camp. There's if hotels camp, everywhere. No glamping, which is <laughs> Yes. Like, yeah. Do yeah. Beverly Hills. Yeah. Do those yeah. Uh, a yurt or something. <laughs> yes. So, no yeah, matter a yurt is any safer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if, nobody needs to sleep on the ground because yeah. then you're naked <laughs> with a knife chasing a ghost in the woods. That's a great I know. story. I know. So coming up on your podcast, you have anything exciting that you're covering? I have Roanoke coming up, which I really can't mm -hmm. wait for. Mm -hmm. um, and I had pitched it to Patrick and he was like, yeah, I guess so. And then I thought, oh, maybe it's been covered too much. But it's one of those things where, you know, it's like if you listen to True Crime Obsessed, Patrick's other show, you've seen the documentary. So you think like, why am I going to listen to somebody recap the documentary? But it's because you want to hear that person's take on it. Right. Um, right. So I love the Roanoke episode. I'm so excited for that one. Oh, the Pride episode, the uh, episode for Pride Month is is really good. We're about to start working on some new ones like uh, Simulation Theory. Yeah. And, That's yeah. blowing my mind. I'm no kidding. Yeah, I, I'm like all about Simulation That's Theory right now. And what if, like, what if yeah. ghosts are actually just like glitches? In the Matrix! <laughs> We can literally. I tell you? Can I tell you my theory? God, yeah. I'm like I'm like all She's about. She's full blown in. I'm full blown in because it was one of those, that one thing. What? That, did you watch that documentary? Yet? No, oh, not okay. yet, not yet. There's one that. What's it called? I don't know. Glitch in the Matrix. It's yeah. I think it's called Glitch in the Matrix. I just saw David Ferrier talking about yeah, it. So we need to watch oh, that. Um, I had this theory one day recently. I was like staring up at the sky and it was really blue, but I had really bad floaters in my eyes, uh -huh. like. Isn't it weird that your brain just tells you that all of this stuff is there? Like we're not really seeing any of this, mm -hmm. and it it really is the like that is the matrix. Like we, mm -hmm. it's our brain, but mm -hmm. we're just assuming that our brain is actually showing us everything. Like how do we know, know. there's not all this other stuff that we just physically are not capable of seeing because we're attached to this thing. And maybe right. what death is, is when you're not attached to that anymore, then it's you can, free. then you can you're see free. It all. You can see all of it. So maybe and then my, my whole thing about ghosts and haunting, if that's true, if like we are detached from our 2D or whatever senses, why are you going to hang around your old stuff? Like, go. That's a good point. You know, like, that makes me sad. The thought that, like, someone's like, I now have unlimited consciousness in this enlightened state, but get away from my old armchair. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's depressing. No, I See, know. It's like, now's the time to travel the world. And yes, go to, go to Tahiti. Yeah. Go, you know. Okay, here's my theory. Some places just have so much energy that even though we can't actually see it or process mm -hmm. it, it's like our brain is trying to, like it can't ignore it anymore. Yeah. So it gives us things that kind of make sense to us, like something that looks like a human or somebody that looks something that looks like a relative mm -hmm. or whatever. It just kind of tries to make sense of whatever this thing is. So then we work it into our own narrative. Then we're like, oh, well, it's probably just that old guy who used to live here who's whatever. Right. Whereas right. actually just something that's completely unrelated that our brain's trying to make sense of. Yeah. So yes. that's... um. I also think if it were actually anything like the movie, The Matrix, that we would have made better lives for ourselves. Like, I mean, that's... a queen somewhere. Oh. Yeah. All honesty. That is the thing about that is that I think like this is what we chose. I mean, I think that way anyway what? about humans. I'm like, man, we could have done anything and this is what we came up with. Like, what? why do we hate ourselves? Maybe this but, is better than we realize. I, that's Ooh. the scary part. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. never, like, again, back to the actual movie, The Matrix or whatever. <laughs> Once they're in the real world, it's awful. Everybody, everybody has to wear burlap sacks and oh, yeah. eat mush. Yeah. yeah. And I much prefer 
just any yeah, but what but <laughs> food yeah but isn't that like the ultimate question what would you sacrifice to be free one of the things that always throws my little theory out the window though is like ufos are you going to do one on ufos Ooh, yeah Oh, so we were about to release UFOs and then it was the second episode I wrote and Patrick went back and listened to it and he's like, no, we have to redo the whole second half of it. It just, we hadn't quite found our voice yet. And there's so much good stuff happening no right kidding. now. With like all the government yeah. stuff. Oh, I know. I just, oh, it's I, like they're releasing videos by the day now and it's like, yeah. I yeah. Know. Lester freaking Holt was talking about it. <laughs> on I was like, yes. and he's legit. Yeah. That one yeah. scares me though. That's the one. Cause like anytime you you listen to any of the really just wheels off mm. UFO conspiracy stuff. And I always try to like allow room for all possibilities. If I'm allowing the possibility that none of it's real, I also have to allow for time traveling Bigfoot theories and right. you know, that I'm being probed nightly, right. which is right. entirely possible. Yeah. I mean, I do think you've been probed. I have, basically, I have probing dreams. <laughs> I've, I haven't wow. had in a while. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. Like they're <laughs> so real. And in the in the dream, there's always a reason. I'm at the doctor. Or oh. there's someone. <laughs> but it's always probed by an alien. But there's always that moment where you're like, no. <laughs> I really I have questions about those. I really have questions about those dreams. That is that is interesting. I had a partner who had what he called sexomnia, which is where he would initiate sex with his partner in his sleep. Oh, and has that. Yeah, yeah, it's very bizarre. No, yeah, I've I've experienced that. Okay, <laughs> uh, I wonder. I'm just saying, maybe I'd be like, hey, babe. <laughs> yeah, maybe your partner has sexomnia, and when you're having those probing dreams, it's actually just him. It's actually, just, just happening. Dave. I feel like in the morning I would wake up and feel. You would know. I would oh, yeah. know. It, like it would hurt. Okay. <laughs> Here's something. Or you know. Here's sure. something I, I've been thinking about. I, have, I don't think we've ever talked about no, this. I, we might need a therapist after this. <laughs> <laughs> but please keep going because I don't like to stop a train wreck. Have you ever had a sleep orgasm? Oh, yes. yes. I have. <laughs> Thank you. What? Thank you. Same here yeah. where you wake up in the middle and you're like, Thank you. I have not, yes. you haven't had that this. That sounds amazing. Okay. No. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they seem it's to pretty be great. It is, cause she, it's like all- It's a delightful mm -hmm. surprise. Yes, all the benefit without any of the work at all. Oh my God, even better. Yeah, yeah, actually the very first time it happened to me, I was 14 and I was on Outward Bound in uh, <laughs> in the Sierra, uh, not, Sierra Nevada mountain, <laughs> not Sierra Nevada, that's a beer. Anyway, in the mountains. Uh -huh. And um, we were all sleeping in our sleeping bags and I woke up- <laughs> And my legs were straight up in the air in my sleeping bag. Like I should say, I hadn't experienced yeah. real sex right, yet. Right. And it's that not like really good and surprising. <laughs> but it's not like my knees, it's not like my legs were bent. They were like straight up in the air. And I was so embarrassed because I thought about the counselors looking over and being like, what is going on over there? <laughs> Although I doubt, like, I think they're the last thing they would have suspected was that I was having. That's true. Story. That's true. Yeah, it would have been. And Daisy, thank you so much for saying yes, because if you had said no and I had just put that I shit out there. on the table, I would be horrified right now. No, so no, it's, it's a thing. I mean, boy, you know, boys certainly have it. Interesting. Some people do orgasm while they're giving birth. Oh, yes, that's true. That's the thing. It makes sense because you're, you know, yeah. your body's just like, Bleh. and then some people so. do it while working out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. Yes, There's that's a whole true. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be lovely to be that orgasmic? Where you're, <laughs> it's like, well, we just I remember, I remember when I was taking like a birthing class when I was pregnant and I, we watched an orgasmic birth and I was like, that would be terrific. I mean, that, <laughs> you know, I would, he would do it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's like everybody would have a baby at that point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was not, it was the opposite of, of yeah. orgasmic. <laughs> when does the orgasm part like, start? <laughs> so Daisy Egan, yeah. oh Strange and Unexplained Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to yeah, us. Yeah, you were so Thank fun. you. Yeah, you're awesome. You guys are great. I love your show so much. Oh, Thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, we'd love to check in with you every now and then next season whenever you have sure. something cool you want to talk about Absolutely. and if, if you ever need input on ghosts or or <laughs> anything we would we we've we'll got help. it 
We got stories. Yeah, send send me your stories. Absolutely. Okay. Oh yeah, and when you start doing that, things uh, found the hidden rooms podcast. Ooh, when yes. you do that, I can't wait. Yeah, that's gonna be. Oh, it gives me the chills. Yeah, because we've yeah. had multiple stories like that where people have found mm-hmm. the hidden rooms in their house and they turn it into a closet and then the door won't stay closed <laughs> on its own. Yeah, we, that podcast needs to happen. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Daisy. It was so thank and thank you. you. Sorry, we were running late. I don't know That's what. Okay, I, did. I don't know what happened. Let's hope it's it recorded. Yeah, it recorded. Okay. <laughs> like, oh my god, we have Thanks. to start over. No, yeah, <laughs> from the top, hairless balls. <laughs> <laughs>